Hello and welcome everyone, General Bartos here and I'm here to review the 2.0 fighter of Sweden, the J-22. This thing actually came out with, well, the obviously the, the update Northern Wind 1.95, which was the day before yesterday, I think. So, let's get started on the review. So first of all, I'm going to talk about its energy retention, its, its uh, speed, its climb rate, that kind of stuff. Then I'm going to talk about its dogfighting capacities, and uh, furthermore, I'm going to talk about its its um, armament and its modifications, and how you could best use it in an arcade match. So let's get started, shall we? So first of all, I'm going to talk about its speed. Now this thing isn't particularly fast, it's not that slow either. Certainly in level flight, you're going to outfly the French MS series, for example, which also arrested a pattern rating of 2.0, so you risk facing these planes. Other comparable planes are the B191, which is definitely faster than you are. Also, the Ek-1 will certainly outfly you, and of course, Heinkel 100s and MC-202 Fulgores, which are fast planes anyway. They just you just don't don't keep up with these kind of machines. So its speed is rather average, it's not great, it's not too slow, but you know you don't need to be particularly fast because you come across a lot of biplanes as well, so you'll find a lot of planes that you can actually outfly. Now next up is its climb rate. Now this thing can climb decently I suppose, it's, it's, it's not bad, it's kind of, it climbs kind of like a P40 and P66, you know, it, it's mediocre at its climb. It, it's not great. It's not bad either, you know. It, it's it's doable. Now, as a sort of a match, you could possibly pull this thing to 30 degrees angle until you start to come around 300 kilometers per hour, which you can then drop your nose to 20 degrees. And then it will confidently climb very slowly, increasing its speed. Until you run out of web, you want to start climbing at an angle of 15 to 17 degrees and then its speed will actually remain about 270 between 270 and 300 kilometers per hour next up is its energy retention now its energy retention is rather appalling to be honest this thing can pull slight maneuvers and it will just throw its speed straight over the window especially if you start dock fighting with this plane if you pull hard maneuvers in this plane it's going to bleed its speed immediately and you can easily drop under underneath the 200 kilometers per hour which is bad I meaning you don't want to go into a dogfight with this machine now the dogfighting isn't so well it, it can dogfight theoretically if it had energy retention because its elevators are responsive its rudder is responsive it does feel nose heavy but i think it's also because of the uh, once you become really slow, it kind of wants to dip its nose to the ground, like any plane. Its roll rate is also okayish. You know, it's not bad either, it's just normal. It's nothing spectacular, like a Fuku Wolf or something, but it's just good. It's good. So it's not bad. It's not a bad dogfight to do its, its, its uh, responsiveness. It's just bad at dogfighting because of its bleeding energy so quickly. So just don't dogfight in this machine, no, instead if you want to get killed, even if you win a dogfight in an extended one, you're going to be very vulnerable to other fighters, which can just pick you out really easily and just, you know, bury you into the ground. The other problem is, is that if you're going to dogfight at 2.0, a lot of your enemies can be biplanes, which are not really the planes you want to be turn fighting with at all. So next up is actually its fun part, which is its armament, and here is where the difference between the A and B version comes in. The CDA version actually comes with four machine guns mounted in the wings, just like the B. But the A version has two 8mm machine guns and two 13.2mm machine guns. The B version actually has four 13.2mm machine guns. Now the 8mm machine guns aren't bad, they actually do quite decent damage. And as you can see in the belts, they have a lot of choices between tracers and armor piercing rounds. But they also have the air target belt, which provides you with two incendiary bullets. 
these tunes in here, but it's really worked well, certainly it is BR, since the planes are very flimsy and vulnerable anyway, so you can set things aligned rather easily. Now these 13.2mm machine guns, they actually are the things that do the most damage, they're incredible. Honestly, and if you look at the belts right here, you can already see that the default belts has high explosive fragmentation shells and two armor piercing rounds. High explosive fragmentation shells on a 13.2mm machine gun at 2.0, it's insane, honestly. Now the air target's belt becomes a little bit more extreme with three of these bullets inside of them. And these things just rip planes apart, it's amazing. You honestly don't have to be a sniper in these in this plane at all. I mean, just a few bursts and the plane just vaporizes. It's incredible. Now what I think is about this thing is that they are rather low velocity. So compared to 50 cals, I think they drop far easier to the ground. So you want to be kind of you know, make sure that you, when you shoot with them you aim a little bit more higher than you normally would, especially when you hunt ground targets for example, but that's not really a big problem at all. So yeah, next up are the modifications. Now these modifications, if you're going to spec this plane, you want to start with either the radiator or the gun belt. It doesn't really matter which you choose, since the radiator doesn't really add that much at all. It's just kind of a choice you can make. Um, after that, you certainly want to go to the next modules, which you know are compressor, your engine, and engine injection. And next up, you want to go to the cover, the wings repair, the airframe, and fuselage repair, and then the belts. Or you know, you can do the belts earlier. It doesn't really matter because the default belts they already do lots of damage anyway. So you can just fly with the four belts if you like, it doesn't really matter. And lastly, you want to go for these guns, new machine guns. Why is that? Well, I already told you, the guns just vaporize planes really quickly, so you're not going to be overheating your guns that much. And the spread also doesn't really matter since the high damage. So that's why I chose to do them as lastly. Okay, now how do you fly this plane, and, and what do you do when you come up against it? So if you are flying this plane, you certainly want to be at altitude and you want to take down bombers and unaware uh, fighters with boom and zoom tactics. That's what this plane shines at, honestly. That's what it's good at. Um, when you come across this plane, however, you might want to be careful not going to head on with this plane because its guns are so powerful. What you want to do is get into a dogfight or you want to stall trap it, either of those in order to actually, uh, well, destroy it, because then it bleeds its speed incredibly fast, and then it's dosed. So, well, yeah, that's a bit of my short review on the J-22. What do you think of the J-22? Do you think it's a good plane? Do you like it? Have you flown it, perhaps? Have you come across it? Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Um, also, leave a like on this video if you like this kind of content, and then I might consider making more of such content in the future. Anyway... That's all for me guys for now, um, I hope you all have a good one and I'll catch you in the skies.